another episode of Bagged and Board. I am Vlad St. Valentine, and with me is Mr. Joseph Bowen. How you doing, brother? Doing pretty good. How's the scotch treating you? Oh, excellent. Excellent. I'm, I had to switch over to something a little more refreshing, so I'm, I'm on to the, uh, the, uh, the clear party liquor. Oh. This be mine for the rest of the night. I don't drink nothing I can't see through. With the party liquor. I'm not picky. Oh man, that was a it's an unknown Henson quote, man. You gotta respect the unknown Henson. Yep. So, part three of Maximum Carnage here, man. This was uh we had two kind of uh intense episodes kind of starting off with issue one and two. And we did. Th- this was a little bit of a respite. So of course we you know we start off with Spider Man and Cloak just left in the rubble of, you know, Cloak and Dagger's little church uh home base and yep. You know, Dagger, of course, is or Cloak is just pissed off because Dagger has has been killed, and Spider Man's trying to get him to calm down. Which honestly was not. He was really. <laughs> yeah, it was not a good time to tell someone to fucking calm down. No, no, he actually literally said, "You should calm down." Yeah, you don't know, tell it, someone to calm down when they're not Sp- going to calm down. Spidey, you're good with the quips, but tell people to calm down when the fucking like basically their other ha- like MJ just died. Someone's like, it's like, dude, you just just fucking slow down, okay? Like you'd be like, fuck you, motherfucker. There's other fish in the sea. That's basically yeah. what he did. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you, Spidey, and you know what? <laughs> people can yes. mourn it when their girlfriend dies, and people can have a fucking cigarette when someone tries to kill them, and then you kill them in return. Like that's warranted to have a fucking cigarette. Get off MJ's back. Word, fucker. <laughs> 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 don't tell me when I can have a cigarette you red and blue bastard yeah so Cloak tells him you know fuck you dude I can be as angry as I want to and I'm not going to stop until these people are dead for doing this to Dagger it's like there's not even thing here for us to bury you know Yep. so he goes off and of course uh, you know Peter goes home and talks to MJ and you know she's like you didn't even try not to do this and he's like what the f- what the hell did you want me to do? You know, you didn't even bring me back that Chinese food. Yeah. She's still pissed off about those fortune cookies. Yeah. She didn't get the food this time. No, I mean, she no. got the food last time Yeah, and they was, missed the cookies. This time she got nothing. She went to bed hungry. Dude, they even put extra fortune cookies in there. Yeah, he gave her extra fortune cookies. He's like, I know your wife. She wants extra fortune cookies. But while spider, Spider-Man and MJ are having their conversation again, we get that family mirror dynamic. Cause then we cut back to, uh, Shriek, Carnage, and Doppelganger, of course. You know, <laughs> Carnage is still pissed off that Shriek tried to take out Spider-Man, you know, and she's like... Slapped what a around ki-. a bit. Yeah, he slaps around. He's like, she's like, what a kill's a kill. He's like, you know, you like that rock star shit. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something you understand. This band's only got one leader, and it's me, you know. And Doppelganger, of course, tries to defend her, and he just backhands him casually yeah. and sends him flying. So, again, Carnage is laying down his law, laying down the law, fucking, uh, you know, uh, Archie Bunker style over here. Oh, right in the kisser. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to hear now. Don't see that scene of the, the little bit of the symbiote. That was Archie Bunker, though. Especially because um, when, when he slaps, uh, well, Peter Griffin. But, uh, well, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. He's making fun of the uh, honeymooners. He's making fun of the honeymooners, not uh, uh, Ralph uh, Ralph Cramden. Yeah, Ralph Cramden. Yeah. Yeah, because like when the, the symbiote, because he shoots it out of his back, because he's not even looking at a uh, doppelganger when he lunges at him. So just out of his back, just slaps him. So now I'm going to see that scene and think, Pow, right in the kisser. Every <laughs> single time. Thank you. You've ruined domestic violence for me. <laughs> this is what did it? <laughs> yeah, th- this is what did it. <laughs> we all have our breaking points, I suppose. It was pow, right in the kisser. I was fine with it until it had words. Uh, but after he lays in the law a little bit, they just decide to go on a killing spree and they just go to Central Park and tear open a couple's cars or driving through and kill them. Then, like a can opener. Yeah, kill a cop who's walking through and, you know, after because we cut away from them and later on we come back towards the end of the comic, there's just dead bodies everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. So everywhere. They're just killing indiscriminately. I mean, this isn't like, uh, you know, we, we, again, we talked about in the first episode, you know, Joker or Carnage, who's, you know, more devastating and, you know, at least car, at least, you know, Joker might take out the whole city, but like there's you never a, see it. There's like a point to it or something, but you this don't is just, see the bodies everywhere. Like the whole point of this one seems to be the body count. Yes. And also to me, it almost seems more like overkill as well, where it's like, it's getting to the point where there's so many bodies all across New York city now from him. That's like, they don't mean as much to me now at this point. It's strictly becoming well, a statistic. He, at this he's, point. That's well, he's kind literally of what I feel. Like. Rampage. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's like, oh, wow, he just killed all the inmates at Ravencroft. Well, well the, now there's at 50, 80. And then it was like after well, after the uh, uh, Central Park, he's like, what, 88 or 89 
It's it counted 88 or 89, point. Matt, like dead. It's going to be more than that at this point. But like, I, I want to say this it was in the 80s by that point. But it's like, at that point, it's like, it's no it's longer. It's not the number, though. It's the weight doesn't matter to me just, so much. It's just, well, at that point, it's matter. a number. But the number doesn't matter. It's just, it's, he's not a fucking tear. Because it's like, yeah. it's, if you said like, hey, you know, what if one of these people just decided they were just going to kill every single fucking person they saw? How long and what would it take to actually put them down and stop them from doing it? And that's where you're at right now. Yeah. And the carnage is just on the loose. He's found a few people that are into it with him. And it's just, you know, the damage is multiplying. Yeah. So I, this is why this is such a scary book. And my carnage is such a scary character is because he, there's no point to it. It is all. If he just comes across your fucking path. Yeah. You're at the wrong place at the wrong time. That's all it is. I mean, the, the, even more so than, you know, again, we, and I love the Joker. I like the Joker more than I like carnage, but we give Joker the carnage being the ultimate, you know, symbol of chaos. And you know, that that's that, uh, the agent of chaos, but I mean, just one's more methodical than the other. <clears throat> carnage doesn't even have a fucking point. None. Yeah. You know, I, he just, he just wants, he wants the world to burn around him because he hates himself and he hates everything else. He hates the world even more and he wants it all torn down. I mean, he's the person I believe more so even than the Joker that would go to the links that, you know, Batman laughs went to in this dark, uh, the death metal series, you know, with one to basically destroy the universe. Yeah. That's the nice thing Cleus Cassidy wanted to do, you know, is tear down. And I know that, you know, he, he was trying to awaken the God Knoll and the absolute carnage thing, but honestly that wasn't really even Cleus Cassidy at that point. Cause he was a lobotomized corpse living inside the, the husk of the symbiote at that point. But Cletus himself is just a fucking deranged sociopath with, you know, and issues from being beaten in an orphanage as a child. Yeah. This is, uh, after this scene though, is when we do get, uh, the scene you were talking about, uh, or in the last episode with, uh, Demogoblin, uh, yeah. Spider-Man sees him when he goes back out to look for, you know, yes. carnage in them. He's like, I'm going to tell Demogoblin. Of course, Demogoblin spots him and circles back around him and hits him with that. Uh, he that, comes around that building quick too. Yeah. Faster than Spider-Man can react to it like a pure darkness bomb, you know, yeah. and it absorbs him. He's like, it's what every sinner will feel when they reach hell, the pure despair of hopelessness, you know, and again, Spider-Man's in there just like, Oh, what's the point of even trying to get up? You know, it just weighs on him. And of course a priest comes to his aid, you know, with his little, with the cross and tries that's to. That's kind of neat. I, I, uh, I actually kind of like that little thing. I, that's the thing with Spider-Man for me is I enjoy how the, the quite. everyday, yeah. The everyday, you know, nobody might show up to help him with something and it actually does more good than you'd think. Which is something that I think Sam Raimi captured very well. He did. Especially in Spider-Man 2 when he was like, uh, with the, the fucking, uh, Well, with Spider-Man the, 1 yeah. where they're throwing the fucking, they're throwing the cans at Green Goblin while he's like, you know, on the bridge. Yeah. And then Spider-Man 2 when they carry him back and set him down, you know. From like, the, hey, when he saved the train, yeah. Yeah, it's like, we won't tell him your secret, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, it, Sam Raimi did a really good job with what he had. Yeah, and he loves Spider-Man so much that I think he captured the heart of like, because his was he goofy knew. and campy, the 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 dialogue is terrible in these because the, it's over expo. It's uh, there's there's it's an overabundance of exposition in every yes. single fucking thought because which you remind, exactly what you would expect from one of these because you got to remind the yeah. kid who didn't read the last issue what happened. You know what I mean? You can't yeah. assume that anyone you know, the reading you can't wasn't think as, everyone's caught up with everything all the time. Yeah. So and that drags. I mean, I just like catch myself skipping some stuff because like I know this already. I know this already. I know this already. But it's not terrible because again, there's, there's so much else going on and the, the story is still fun. And I absolutely love, uh, anything symbiote related as it is. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I, I excuse it a lot. You know, some of the things we'd probably nitpick today because I guess writing and stuff's kind of evolved or maybe we've evolved yeah. of what we want. Cause there was a lot of over explanation with these, but then again, that's the nineties. Also, there's a lot of, I don't know. A lot of it just kind of, overkill in general with most everything involved with it. But then again, that was the Extra 90s. Extreme. Yeah. It was like yeah. Mountain Dew, the decade. Yeah. Yeah. Extreme Doritos. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was that, but. Well, late nineties, early two thousands really, but you know, this was basically the start of it. Cause this was 93, right? 93. Yeah. So. Hey man, we were still on the high from that 52 to 17 whooping the Cowboys gave them the bills in the Super Bowl. Michael Jackson played the halftime. It was a good day. <laughs> It's sad. I know nothing about sports, but I know that. That's exactly, because everyone oh, was God, alive for that one. Yeah, because we live in Texas. Mm. Cowboys fans can't stop living in the past. <laughs> Where else are we going to live in? Yeah, that's all we got. 
but after the priest and Spider-Man run Demogoblin off, you know, Spider-Man's still just like, I've got to go home, man. I'm not in the shape to fight anybody. You know, his ribs are still cracked. And that's when we cut back, of course, to the park and we see, you know, and we got the swerve there. It was kind of a nice, cool moment because like he's about to get, you know, overtaken by Demogoblin. And you get this panel of Venom because we open up this, we have to mention, we open up this, this comic with Venom showing back up in New York. Yeah. Um, just like walking down the street. Oh, he's, yeah. he's in the airport and then he like kicks through the airport window. Like it's, he gets mad for seeing like carnage on a TV and can't control himself anymore. And the symbiote bust out and like yeah. the security guard at the airport tries to attack him. So he like busts through a window and like swings away. It's like, you can just hold your shit long enough to get a fucking taxi. You know what? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Typical Tom Hardy fashion. Yeah. I'm going to break through this window. Yeah. I get a ride Furiosa into town. Yeah. Shame me to the front of this car. We're getting the fuck out of here. I had to make sure that it was in real life. <laughs> Not a dream. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and I'm broken. <clears throat> broken in half. I was trying so hard to figure out a way to put a, uh, a, a Bronson reference in there, and I just couldn't think of one. <laughs> Something about him fighting people naked and covering his own cum. That's fine enough <laughs> as it is. <laughs> There's a lot of Tom Hardy dick in that movie. If you ever want to see Tom Hardy's dick, put on my to-do list. Yeah. My ex made me watch it a few times because she had a crush on Tom Hardy. She's like, let's watch some Tom Hardy dick. But yeah, we got that swerve though. Uh, thinking Carnage was, you know, that panel splashes of Carnage when he's getting when Spider-Man's getting overwhelmed by Demogoblin. You think, oh, Venom's gonna go help, you know, Spider-Man because he's like, it's like there's a disturbance down there. Then he's like, he hears something's like going on in the park. It's like, oh, that's more important. There's dead bodies there. That must be Carnage, and just fucks off. It's like, oh, I guess no one's coming to help Spider-Man. Nope. Going like, straight. Nice swerve on. I was like, oh, he's, he's going to come help Spider-Man. He's going like, straight oh, no. to the park. He ain't, he ain't going to help Spider-Man, which is what their downfall is. They're separate. You know, yeah. you got, they're fighting a team and they're, they're trying to take these things on by themselves, which, uh, you know, Spider-Man decides to limp off back home uh, to MJ because he's in no condition to fight. He's also fully not, he's not even aware that Venom has come back either. He does no, he knows nothing about it. He hasn't. No, no, no. But after the Demogoblin <laughs> encounter and the priest and him, you know, he goes back. And then we cut to the, again the park where we see just the slew of dead bodies all There's over the slaughter, place. Yeah. yeah, and Venom of course shows up and tells Carnage like I'm gonna drain a gallon of blood for every drop of innocent one you spill. Which I'm I like, did like that line. It's a good line, but he's not an anime character, so he doesn't have that much blood in him. A and B, if his blood is just more symbiote, that's probably a bad idea. Just snap the neck and just keep all the skin intact and just. Venom's there about to whip some ass, but of course Carnage is like I got some buddies, and we just do the whole they jump on him and we cut away. Back to MJ and uh, uh, Peter back at their house. They're, you know, Peter's nursing his wounds. And there's a knock at the door and we end with a beaten Venom, you know, with a symbiote kind of half on and half Barely off. Barely hanging you know? on him, yeah. And they fall through the door, you know, he's come to Peter's place. So one of their worst enemies is half dead at their door and MJ's already fucking stressed as shit. So the fact that she hadn't left Peter Parker to go marry some nice, kind of safe She's accountant. Just <laughs> That'd be flavor country. <laughs> It's all right. They're they're just building up right now. So she can have her own PSA later. <laughs> Don't do what I did. Yeah. She's like talking through a whole. Me and Peter were so happy <clears throat> with my horribly nineties drawn body. I used we're to like stress smoke. My waist is this big around, but my ass house. is like this. Yeah. God bless her. Yeah. This one was again a little bit of a rest, but there's a lot of downtime with you know kind of Venom or Carnage and his family having a little bit of a talk. Spider Man talking with MJ, of course. Uh, the only real action we got was just that minor action scene between Demogoblin and Spider-Man. And then just kind of an off scene off camera, as it were violence, you know, between when Venom get, yeah, you don't even get to see what happened there. So and this is called like the rage of Venom, which is just kind of a misnomer and miss sell for this one. Cause there wasn't much Venom or much rage. No, he's mostly, well, he was pissed off and didn't do him much good when he got jumped by two other people. So especially one of those people who could wield sonic blasts. Yeah. It, it was a, a rise of Skywalker with Venom. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that bad? He raged in the airport. Which well, now I mean, the rage of Venom, the rise of Skywalker, both fitting for not being either of those things. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. <clears throat> but man, that's all I got for this one. This one was not terribly interesting. And you know, we, we get to see that I mean, we got Venom was defeated and, you know, gets his ass handed to him and he just shows up broken on Peter Parker's door. And that was kind of a shocking moment. But he had a nice cliffhanger. But other than that, in the cool little darkness bomb. Yeah. There wasn't a whole lot to this one. It was, was this was kind of a lull. Uh, but you kind of need those. You need those. You do. Yeah. That's what I was going to say is you absolutely need that because if it's all just action and death and violence and people's heads, you know, all over the place, 
eventually you get desensitized to it when there's so much of it. You and need I, to have those moments to rest to where you can actually push the story forward. Well, I also think it makes and the story feel one of those, longer this, too. Yes. And this is one of those where you can actually have a story yeah. versus just nonstop crazy. Because again, there's so much action in the other two that you have to slow it down at some point. But yeah, when you when you get these highs and these lows and you get to come up and you get to come down, you get to rest some here for a little while and you get to go on this journey. It makes the f- story feel longer. It makes you feel like you've gone more places. Yes. It makes you feel like you've been a part of this thing for an extended period of time. And I think it's, even though the dialogue in this is not great, the story structure, I think, is far superior to what we're getting today as far as comics go. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, dialogue, not so much. Dialogue today, well, dialogue today is too smart for its own good. They're, the Tarantino just did everyone dirty um, by making everybody wish they were they were too hip and too cool for the room. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is what it is. Also, they like reading this. You can tell there's definitely passion for these characters and what they can do and yeah. what you can do with them and exploring possibilities, um, which you don't really get so much nowadays because at this point, like everyone thinks they've already done everything. So it's just, well, let's just rehash something we've already done. Any final thoughts on this one? It was slower. Uh, I really like the cliffhanger at the end with the uh, venom showing up at Spider-Man's door. Yeah, so that's, I, it makes me really um, optimistic for what's going to happen next. A lot of iconic scenes in this one, and that's definitely one of them. The uh, the enemy falling out, you know, the desperate uh, antihero falling at his enemy coming to, yeah, door coming to for Spider Man. Yeah, of all places, he goes to Spider Man's house, like his front door of his apartment. Like that's yeah. that's kind of a it's kind of a cool thing to see actually, because you wouldn't think Venom would do that normally, but no, yeah, had- also the kind of the point. So. Yeah, again, like dollar, who else can you trust? You know, slower, not a lot going on in this one, but it did have some great moments, and it's definitely vital overall to the storyline. You need these beats. Oh, yeah. You need the quiet moments with them just fucking, you know, Frodo and them singing a song with the Glade and shit. You know what I mean? You need those, those down beats between the action. Also, it's a Spider Man story. So you have to have that inner conflict as well. So you have to have Mary Jane wanting something for them and yeah. him trying to also do something for the city. Yeah. You have to have that. And this is one of those really good comics for that. Yeah. Carnage will definitely take away everything you try and hold sacred and hold on to, and he'll take Easy. pleasure in it. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. This was part three. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we will get you parts four through six. So stay tuned for that. Please like, please subscribe and um, send more scotch. Scotch.